I am just getting back from a little weekend away and I love whenever I leave my apartment to leave it very spotless so that I come back and can just relax. I didn't get a chance to do everything before I left. So I'm gonna spend the afternoon doing some dishes, some laundry, and doing a little apartment tour, showing you all the DIY projects I've done, all my plant babies, and sharing links for items that are my absolute favorite. I live in a 575 square foot studio apartment in Los Angeles. I paid $2,500, not including water and internet. And I actually lucked out because I locked in this price during COVID. So now apartments in a similar fashion in my same area are definitely more expensive, which is why I definitely don't want to move. I love my spot. It is my little oasis, as I call it, with all of my plant babies, the incredible lighting, and obviously the loft element and the high ceilings. It feels really spacious, even though it's technically only 575 square feet, but because the square footage on the loft isn't actually accounted for in that square footage, it definitely feels like I have a lot more space because I have an upstairs. This is my fridge. It's a bit empty right now because I just traveled, but my favorite thing about the fridge is these containers. It helps me keep everything just separated. I can see most of the stuff. I'm not letting things go bad because I can pull these out and get everything out. I do have a box of HelloFresh coming today, so I will be filling up this fridge soon. But one of my favorite containers is this berries container. I'll rinse my berries and then put them in here to keep them fresher and then any greens that I have I can put either kale or spinach in here and put a dry towel in there to keep it fresh and lasting longer. I have this key holder at the entrance. It's magnetic, so easy access to just put my keys there. I have a tendency to constantly lose my keys and I don't know where they are. So I also got a tile for them in case I can't find them in my bag or think I've lost them. I have lost them at the dog park before and found them three days later. Insane, such a stressful experience. But after that, I learned my lesson and got a tile. This key holder also motivates me to just have it here at all times. This is the tile that I have. It makes this little noise whenever I'm looking for it. It's connected to this app on my phone and I can either press it and there it makes this little beeping noise so I can find it or I can use the app on my phone. Highly recommend this if you tend to lose your keys like me. I also use this to store my sunglasses and I'll just put them through one of the magnetic rings that are up there. That way I never forget to take a pair of sunglasses with me on my way out. And then this is the view of my place from the front door. This is the entryway. The bathroom's over here. We'll take a look in there in a sec. And then this is the entryway statement pieces. I've got a little cabinet there with storage items. This vase from Target and this pompous grass from Amazon and I got this mirror as a steal from home goods most likely won't be able to find it because I got it two years ago but I'll try to link something similar this storage cabinet I believe is from Ikea and my main little trash can is from Target then over here is my closet I actually DIY this whole entire closet so it was just an empty space over here it didn't come with anything, but on the other side is where my laundry and dryer is. So I ended up getting this bar from Ikea. And if you can see, it drills into the wall behind. It has fallen out a few times because I have put way too much stuff on here. So I'm trying to keep it light. And whenever I have guests, I'll just move some of my coats upstairs. And then I have this over the door coat hanger that I ended up drilling into the wall as well. So I had a place for my bags and hats. And then of course I have a shoe rack down here as well as upstairs because I have way too many shoes. Mostly workout shoes that I get sent to try. I have some Vivo Barefoots, Reeboks, and Pumas. These are 
generally my go-to shoes and then my nicer dress up shoes are upstairs. I also need to do laundry, but I have a box of socks that I keep down here so I don't have to go all the way upstairs when I'm heading out. And then opening up the other side, I have my washer and dryer, my detergent over here, and some storage items up there. I'm trying to cook more and I'm back from travel so I ordered some food that would be ready for me when I got back. I got three meals from Green Chef and I try to order from places that have vegan friendly options and then I'll add in my own protein to it, whether it's tempeh, tofu, chickpeas, or an impossible meat or something like that. I got the crispy cauliflower edamame bowls, the curry spiced sweet potato wraps, the Thai snap pea and peanut curry. And this is not sponsored by the way. I just really needed some motivation to kickstart cooking again. And I love using different meal kits to jumpstart my motivation to cook again. So I don't have to do that extra step of figuring out what the meal is and then going grocery shopping. I can cut out those extra steps, get into the rhythm of cooking again. And then when I'm feeling inspired, then I can choose my own recipes and go grocery shopping. This is the kitchen, and if you've seen my previous videos, you know this little corner right here is my little Pinterest corner, my favorite little spot. I ended up grabbing all these things from a bunch of different places, and it all just worked together, and I'm pretty sure I saw something like this on Pinterest, and I am well into my neutral era, so this is like, the epitome of my Pinterest board. This kettle is from Fellow. I love the stovetop version because it doesn't end up taking up too much space. A lot of the rattan items I have are either from Target or Home Goods. This was Home Goods. This little jar was actually from a Pottery Barn outlet, so it was like 50% off. Home Goods, Home Goods. And my little mixer and stand was off of Amazon. I ended up doing a DIY of this backdrop. It was just a plain white wall, and I wanted to feel like it was separate from the other parts of the room. And so I got these peel and stick tiles off of Amazon and you really had to take time to get all of the edges perfectly and cut them. Like you can see some of them aren't super perfect, but you really can't notice that from far away. And I really love how it sets the kitchen apart from the rest of the room. This is the living room. It's giving cozy, it's giving neutral, it's giving aesthetic vibes. And I'm here for the vibes. <laughs> I stuck to the neutral theme, but with a pop of color, not to make it too boring. This couch is from Value Furniture. I will say it's so comfy and cozy. A must have for me with a white couch was that I needed to be able to wash the covers. And so you can take off every bit of the layers, including this part can even come off in order to wash the whole thing and keep it clean. So with the dog around and me being in my hosting era, I definitely want to keep this area very clean and pristine. This rattan coffee table is also from Home Goods. I got these coasters on the streets of Colombia, and then my mom got me these coasters from Marrakesh. Always gotta have candles on every single table, of course. It's like the number one rule of the Danish Hygge cozy vibes. And then of course, accenting the living room with all of the plants to bring it to life. A few accent tables over here for the plants and for my board games. I am a board game fan. In fact, I'm hosting a board game night tonight and my board game drawer is bursting. I definitely need a new space to hold all of my board games. 
I found this cute little wire bicycle online and this girl was just selling them and I went to her house down the street and got it. It's such a cute addition to my home and I love just having these really unique personal touches around the home, not to make it feel like I'm living in a model home, but actually a lived in home. Hence why I have all of my different books around. These are either my favorite books or books that I am really hoping to read soon. Everything from Mark Batterson, The Circle Maker, to Search Inside Yourself, learning about meditation from the science perspective, The Body Keeps Score, talking about trauma and how it stays in the body and healing that, Children of Blood and Bone, me trying to get more into fiction. This one is Algorithms to Live By. My nerdy side is showing. Over here, we've got Everybody Always in Love Does by by Bob Goff, some of my favorites, just the power of showing love in this world. And um, Bob Goff is such a like loving, kind person and you really see it in his personality through these books. And it's so inspirational to just be a more loving and kind person. Over here, we've got Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and The Genius of Jesus. I go to Mosaic and Erwin is the pastor at Mosaic. I had half a mind to have this swing chair hung all the way from the top. It might be a little bit of a hazard to be swinging around on the swing chair so I kept it in the stand. I got this from Target and it's amazing. This is my cozy corner, my little reading nook and I love this chair so much. I've spent so many mornings in this chair for the last two years. There have been sources of inspiration. I have meditated and prayed over so many things that have come to pass in my life from this chair. And so it just carries a lot of weight for me. This is actually the first place I've ever lived alone. I gave myself a budget and allowed myself to splurge a little to make my home really feel like my own, as opposed to a bunch of roommates coming together and sharing things that felt kind of disheveled and not congruent. It definitely adds life to a space, but when you get to furnish and own everything in your own home, it just hits different. This is one of those larger purchases that I really wanted to invest in to make this home feel like a home for me. The grander space of the reading nook. And of course, having all the plant babies around helps with the inspiration and extra oxygen when I'm reading and journaling and meditating. Don't let this guitar fool you. It is purely aspirational and I do not play guitar. Do you see these nails? These nails don't play guitar. But one day, one day. I also have this little area of baby plants that I propagated from here. I'm not propagating anything right now because I've transferred all of them over to these little pots and I tend to give them away as gifts to friends for housewarming, if people visit, if they're just wanting plants. Um, I love making more plants out of my own plants. It's a great gift and a personal touch that people are always reminded when they're taking care of their plants, how many plants I have in my own home. This pot was from Target and aside that, most of these pots are just from a bunch of different places. I've been collecting plants for the last three years basically since the pandemic and clearly it's become a thing this is the dining room area i wanted a dining table that didn't take up too much space because it is a limited space downstairs so this table believe it or not seats six it is a foldable table and expandable so i'll show you in a second but it's great because i can make it even smaller if i need space to work out if i'm hosting more people or i can extend it if i want to have a bigger dining table, which is so epic. I got this table off of Amazon and I will link it, don't you worry. So, it folds like this to be a little bit smaller and then I won't do the whole thing, but it expands here and symmetrically it expands on the other side, which is awesome. which is so good to conserve space. This is my desk space. 
space area. I've sat in this chair for hours doing edits and voiceovers for my app, editing videos, working on brand deals. This is a standing desk, so I do have the ability to stand and work, which is really helpful, but we'll keep it down for now, it's fine. <laughs> and of course, being surrounded by my plant babies keeps me motivated. The number one tip that I found for motivation when I'm at my computer and wanting to focus for Pomodoro 25 minutes of focus and five minutes of rest is using my phone to time lapse myself. It's this motivation for me to not touch my phone because I'm clearly filming and just focus for 25 minutes. Then when I'm done, I can stop the time lapse and take a five minute break, make some tea, take a walk with my dog, and then come back and do it again. Since working for myself, the biggest point of contention is finding a rhythm and creating my own schedule that I'll actually stick to. I got this little doggy door off of Amazon and had to teach my dog how to go in and out. There were a lot of treats involved. And then I have this a little balcony out here with this table for dinner, some nice lights that I have light up at night, a little cushion for my dog to sunbathe. And I also taught my dog at eight years old how to use a potty pad so I wouldn't have to walk out late. So if she ever needs to go out when I was at work that she had a spot to pee. This is really my dog's balcony. Now we're gonna head outside to see the building amenities. This is the shared balcony for the whole building. It's connected to the gym, which is on the same floor as my apartment. So supposed to have a low barrier to entry, so I get more workouts in, supposedly. <laughs> it's got a few cardio machines, some weights, and a Smith machine, which is pretty good for a apartment gym, so. I'm happy. And then walking out of the gym, we have the hot tub, the jacuzzi out here, which is really great. It's probably one of the biggest rooftop jacuzzis I've ever seen. You can get the bubbles going at night and the lights. And then there's a barbecue area over here and a little seated area. All right, time to head back inside and I've got a little surprise. I also got another little surprise in the mail. It is from YouTube. All right, so we're gonna open this up and I do believe I know what it is, but I'll let you guys open it with me. This feels like Christmas. Okay, next up, this tape here. Don't cut yourself, Jibby. Okay, here it goes. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, let's read this first. It says, do you remember your first subscriber? Me, I was my first subscriber. I created a whole nother account to make sure that I had at least one subscriber. I am my number one fan. If not me, who else will? Your first 1000 subscriber, chances are you do. And we know that you'll remember your 100,000 subscriber. <laughs> Your fans may have found you while searching YouTube, learned about you through a friend, or maybe showed up as a recommended video. How did you guys find me? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. No matter how they came to your channel, your audience stayed and their numbers increased because of you and the community you've built. We're proud to honor your impressive milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations, yay! We know that you have many more stories to share with your community, and we know your fans can't wait for you to amaze them even more with your commitment and creativity. So keep creating, keep building. We can't wait to see what you'll do next, and we're here to support you along the way. And who knows, when you reach your 1 million subscribers, we may just write to you and ask, do you remember your 100,000 subscriber? Yours sincerely, Neil Mohan, head of YouTube. Oh my goodness, uh, this is so surreal. I don't even wanna look at it yet because I'm just like, I can't believe that this is real. I started my YouTube channel like, I don't even know if I still have some of my OG, OG YouTube subscribers way back when I was like 
17, 18 years old, 10 years ago, and I started a hair channel. And I had that for like a year, maybe two years. And three years ago, I decided to start a fitness YouTube channel during the pandemic to help my friends and family stay fit. And to think that this is where my channel is now is just mind blowing. And I just cannot thank you guys enough for your support. I just love you all so much. And I've been so motivated as I chase my dreams and see so much of it come to pass that I can help you guys do the same thing. Whether it's in fitness, mental health, or wellness, or even comedy, I love that you guys have shown up here and supported me, and I couldn't thank you enough. So, with that being said, <gasps> oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Wow, this is, oh, chills. I remember visiting the home of a YouTuber and seeing their 100,000 plaque in person and just beaming up at it like a little kid and being like, that's gonna be me one day. That was two years ago, almost to the date. And I'm just, I'm really grateful. I think sometimes I forget to be grateful and I think that I'm not doing enough and I'll stress myself out trying to do more than it is in my capacity because I think I should be growing faster or doing things differently or filming better or, or speaking better or getting different brand deals or making more money. The gravity of how I actually changed my life is sitting with me in this moment right now. Okay, I'll stop holding it up and I'll show you guys. Oh, here she is. Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna take her out of the plastic. We have to find a place for her. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Wow. Presented to Studio Jibby for passing 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here she is. Wow. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> no, but, um, but honestly, I want to thank God first, above all else, for bringing me here to this moment because Lord knows I have given up on myself so many times and I have been reminded in my spirit that I am worthy and I am loved and complete as I am. And that has allowed me to move so much more into my purpose throughout life. <laughs> and I wanna thank my mom for being the first person to ever love me and never stopping that love even to this day. And lastly, thank you all. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my channel. And I'm just so grateful for where we are right now in this moment. Heck yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's find a place for this baby. I feel like it could go on this little stand over here. Oh, but it won't fit. It's too big. What if I like angled it? No. All right, let's see. Maybe I could put it. Ooh, I could have it there by the desk. That could be a spot. Ooh, okay, I like that. She's nice and prominent. She's got her little pedestal over there. Oh, wow. There it is. Yay! This is the upstairs. I really just have three areas here my bed, the closet area where clearly I need to do some laundry, and my dresser. The dresser is from Ikea. I got the mirror off of Amazon and then have a little corner for perfume and candles, of course. Family pick, more candles and some trinkets. My proudest DIY is my bed frame. I actually made this bed frame 
from pallets on the street. So there was a furniture store that had a bunch of pallets that they were like recycling. And I sandpapered down each one of these blocks so it didn't have any stray splintered pieces. And then put them all together, put my mattress on top, and it was the cheapest thing I'd ever done. I literally paid $5 to sand down all of these pallets, but they were completely free. I was looking at other boho chic bed frames and they just weren't hitting. And some of them were like 200, 300, 400 dollars. And this ended up being the best and fits my vibe completely. Very simplistic and free 99. This is my closet. I still wanna organize up there a little bit and maybe get some bins to keep that looking clean and pristine. I've got a little mini library over here with all of my books and a whole load of laundry that I need to fold and wash. Some more shoes. Over here is another little mini dresser and a shelf that I put up that I still need to figure out what to put up there. I was thinking of putting plants to accent this wall, but plants would just not get any light at all because of this wall that is obscuring any sunlight. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. And off to the bathroom. Lastly, this is the bathroom. The biggest change that I made to the bathroom was this over the toilet cabinet. It helped me have so much more space for all the products and PR that I get. And if I ever have guests, there's some extra space in here. Some people asked if I could take off the toilet thing and like in the two years that I've lived here, I've never had to take this off. So no, I can't take it off with this over the cabinet thing or I technically could, but it'd be really cumbersome. But I've, I've lived here for two years and I've never had to take that thing off. So this is the sink area. Got some cabinet space under here. I'm not even gonna let you look in there because it's a hot mess with all of my hair products. This is the sink area. I've got my hand towel over here, the bathtub, and I need to replace that eucalyptus up there. I try to keep this tub really squeaky clean so that I can take baths in here and not feel like I'm waiting in my own dirt. Something that I love about this apartment is that I am the very first person to live here. So I hated taking baths before because I knew that other people, so many other people had gone in that bathtub. And now that I know that I'm the first and only person, I love taking baths here. It's glorious. I've got my laundry basket over here, my bathrobe, and a little reminder that love is patient and kind. Well, that is it. This is my beautiful loft apartment. And again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being one of 100,000 people here supporting me on this channel. If you can take a quick second to comment below. It really means a lot more than you guys know so that this video can be recommended to others and that my channel can be discoverable to more people. Every like and comment means so much and I try to read through all of them if not respond to most of them so it would mean so much for that extra support. Thank you guys and I'll see you at the next video. Mwah. <laughs>